Hello and welcome to this edition of Quality of Life. I'm your host, Dave Augustine. Today we're going to talk about end of life planning and what's all involved with that. Joining us today from Zimmer Westview Home and Ballhorn Chapels is Mark Zimmer and Pam Burkle. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Um, just to start off with some of your backgrounds, Mark, could you give us a background on how long you've been in this type of business, how you got started? And <clears throat> well, I've uh, uh, most recently celebrated my 38th year as a licensed funeral director. Um, back in the mid-70s, I went to school in Chicago and, and uh, uh, attended a uh, school of mortuary science. And, and after I got out, I, I, uh, I worked uh, as a funeral director in uh, Davenport, Iowa for uh, about six years and uh, moved to Howard's Grove in 1983 and uh, have been in the community uh, 33 years already. Mm -hmm. One of the best moves I ever made. So. I know, I've, I've known you as long as I can remember because that's where I grew up too as well. So You're making me feel old, Dave. Well, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Pam, how about you? Well, I am new with Ballhorn Chapels and Zimmer Westview, but I have been working the pre-planning funeral side and working with families for over seven years. Um, I am a licensed insurance agent, which is how we fund the funerals at the funeral home, and I'm also a certified pre-planning consultant. Okay. Getting into it, you know, you talk about pre-planning. When is a good time to really start thinking about, you know, planning for when it's that time? Well, one of the things I've learned is um, you're never too young to die. Mm. So you're never really too young to plan. Um, when I talk to families and I do speaking engagements, I will tell people anytime you're over 18, you sh there's just certain things you should do and taking care of this in case an accident happens at a young age, it's very helpful to the family. Okay. I've, I've experienced over the years that uh, um, whenever uh, a couple, whether they're younger or older, come in and sit down and discuss uh, final arrangements with myself or with Pam. Uh, their, their adult children are always especially grateful because uh, there's a lot of parts to the planning that uh, uh, when you have to ask an adult child, uh, what was your grandmother's maiden name and they don't remember or when when was uh, your parents' anniversary, things that are necessary for doing an obituary or possibly some vital statistic information. Uh, by being able to meet with the couple that are planning, we can go through those fine details and get that on record so that uh, the, the kids or the children don't have to worry about uh, these things that are fine parts of, uh, of funeral planning. Mm -hmm. And it probably, it's a lot easier for the family to pre-plan it so you're not also grieving at the time when it happens or trying to come up with, you know, the arrangements. So I'm assuming that if it's not, then that could put a huge burden on the family as well. Right. right. That is definitely one of the, one of the main reasons to pre-plan is to protect the family from the emotional burden of making decisions. Um, it's also a fine line between um, what you want as an individual to celebrate your mm -hmm. life at that time and what the family needs. And that's something with pre-planning we can help families walk through and make sure that um, everybody is taken care of. Okay. Some of the parts, that, and I would assume and that's why we're here talking about it, is you know, some of the pre-stages or planning would be like power of attorneys and have all of that. Where would that come into play? With power of attorney, um, it's important for many aspects of your life. Um, but there have been situations with pre-planning that um, an individual has waited mm -hmm. until they may be in their you know, late 80s or 90s and they're not really able to make their own decisions, but it's necessary to make plans. In order for us to do that, it's good to have a power of attorney. So if there's contracts that need to be signed, if they're going to fund their funeral, they can take care of that for them. A lot of times a family member can be designated. Basically, there's power of attorney for health care decisions mm -hmm. and a power of attorney for financial decisions. And these are single page documents. They're a very simple form or instrument mm -hmm. that uh, can be drafted 
uh, by the attorney or, or even by uh, uh, a funeral director in okay. certain cases uh, uh, and has to be notarized, of course. But um, there are legal documents that basically gives a, an appointed person the right to make the decisions that you may not be able to make. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's part of the overall estate planning uh, that we always encourage our families to do ahead of time because uh, a lot of people have the misconception that, um, oh, I've, I've, I've left uh, uh, the instructions for my funeral in my will, but a will is not read until after, after. the funeral. So that can create a dilemma. It's, it's, it's most important that uh, you have your estate planning part done by uh, a good law firm mm -hmm. and then have the funeral planning part done by the funeral home. Okay. When we're talking about the funeral part planning, let's walk through the steps. Where would I start? You know, in, in planning, I want to start to plan my end. So where would I start? Where would I go? What would be one of the first things I would do? Call the funeral home. Call the funeral home. And um, simply uh, talk to us. We, Pam is available to um, meet in the home if the person might be homebound. Or they can, if they feel comfortable, they're certainly welcome to come to the funeral home if if for some reason they don't have transportation, we can certainly send a car to pick them up and bring them to the funeral home and meet with Pam and, and uh, uh, discuss uh, the primary uh, uh, details of, of planning a funeral. Okay. Can we, we go into some? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm Pam. sorry. We have a list of over 125 things that need to be done in many cases after a death and you can come into the funeral home and we can get you started on that path. It's not something that gets done in one day. And that's okay. why planning is so beneficial because you could work through that. Okay. Could we kind of step through the high level part of it? So let's say we set up an appointment, I'm there, I'm by you, I have my power attorney and everything drafted. So let's say that legal stuff is, we're not mm -hmm. getting into that, that's a different matter, but let's say that's all done. So what would be some of the things then we would start to go through? Well, we would start to by talking to you and getting to know you. Mm -hmm. And we like to get personal information. As Mark alluded to earlier, we need information about your parents and whether you graduated high school or not. Um, you know, where you, if you got married, what your spouse's name is. Mm -hmm. Those are things that we need for not only the obituary, but also for the death certificates. Yeah. So we'll walk you through that and go through all the questions. And, and I actually like to get to know you. Mm -hmm. You know, so we sometimes the conversations will go off into a tangent. So um, it's very comfortable as far as us getting to know each other and just talk, um, kind of like we're doing here. And then um, we'll go through your plans. And okay. some people come in and they know exactly what they want. And others say, I have no clue. And that's my job is to give you the options of what you can have for your celebration of life. Okay. Do you, do you like a service like you provide? or your facility with everything. Do you provide everything front to back or do you work with other, bringing in other organizations or agencies to help you know, with other parts of the planning or is it everything that we come to you and it's all handled? I would have to say that we pretty much, I guess for lack of a better way of putting it, is our one uh, stop shopping. Mm -hmm. uh, we can, uh, coordinate things uh, if, if somebody might be uh, looking to get involved with Title 19 uh, benefits um, or if a person um, has uh, uh, issues where they need to um, put aside funds for final expenses, we work with whatever uh, other sources are necessary to accomplish that. But um, normally, uh, as Pam had uh, said, uh, we sit down and we, we get to know the person. We talk about what they're, what's important to them mm -hmm. for their final uh, uh, tributes. And um, a lot of times, family is all there, maybe not. But we assess all of the information they give us, and we help them plan the, the, the best course um, for uh, planning their uh, final uh, funeral. Okay. I know in, was that about 20, 30 years ago, my grandpa passed away, 
20 years ago or whichever. I know we went through that and it was just, you know, the whole process was just like, I never knew all of that stuff had to go on. Like, you know, we sat down, the obituary was written and everything, and I thought that was done behind the scenes or it's like, you know, there's a lot of things that are out of sight, out of mind that happens behind the scenes, which, you know, I can see we're making it, you know, pre-planning and getting it all set up so the family doesn't have to worry about that when it comes time to grieve and, you know, to say their farewells. Mm -hmm. And it's an emotional time, so mm -hmm. you may not be thinking clearly at the time of a loved one's loss. Um, so getting it on paper ahead of time, we don't want to miss anybody in the obituary. Um, there's no redos, so we, right. you know, we want to get it right the first time. So by planning ahead of time, it gives you time to think about it mm -hmm. and make sure that you're, everybody is getting what they need and they're, you know, the grieving process and everything is started properly. Well, you mentioned redos, and that's a good question I'd like to bring up is, you know, you go through, you plan, and let's say all of a sudden you get divorced from one and you get married to somebody else. Do they tend then to come back and change, you know, the plans, or how does that part work? We like the families to um, come back to us and update us. Um, we've had some that, you know, we've, I may have talked to them five years ago, and I would say every five to ten years, yep. come back and visit because life changes, mm -hmm. and you don't realize how much it's changed until you look at what you did ten years ago. Um, so nothing we put on paper is cast in stone. It's it, always changeable. You know, Dave, um, our society has become so transient now, you know, mm -hmm. the, Adult children, some can live in California and some in New York. And maybe a couple, uh, 15 years ago, came in and sat down with me or Pam or somebody and, and planned out their entire funeral, right down to having uh, the funeral lunch and things of this nature. 15 years goes by, they may be, uh, a lot of their friends and things have passed away and their children are, are spread out all over them. They have come in, I have seen families where they say, you know, Mark, things have changed and our plans for our funeral arrangements have changed and we'd like to review that with you and, and modify or change things. And certainly either Pam or, or one of the funeral directors can sit down and uh, help a, a family uh, modify their original plans. As, as Pam said, nothing is really cast into stone. Okay. What about let's say choosing whether, let's say if I want to be cremated or you know, buried, you know, whole, you know, there's burial plots, you know, that you got to look for, or if I'm cremated, then where do you, what happens with that? Could you go through some of that, you know, kind of, of where I would go and how that's handled? We have a list of the local cemeteries. So um, if you come into us and you don't have a cemetery plot, we can give you lists of contacts okay. to, you know, get a hold of and go there and, take a look at the areas and find out what they have available. So again, we're a good resource for all of those items. Okay. There is basically, um, there is burial in the earth, mm -hmm. uh, entombment in a mausoleum, and in the case of cremation, there's also uh, having the cremated remains at home, and also some people choose to scatter cremated remains at a favorite place. And we discuss this usually in earnest with the family to determine, because there are times when people don't understand that after cremation, something has to be done right. for permanent placement of the cremated remains. Right. And of course, there's a lot of options these days uh, with families uh, as to how they feel the, the most appropriate final resting place for the cremated remains is. So we try to advise them on that. Mm -hmm. I know, thinking about it, you know, I'm torn. Do I want to be buried or do I want to be cremated? Do I want to be buried, do I want to be cremated? You know, but part of me wants to be cremated and then scattered on my land up north is where I'm, you know, happiest and something like that. Is there any legal, you know, issues? Because once in a while here, you just can't scatter somebody's ashes around or whatever. Is there anything like that well, that comes into? Legally, the, the actual process of cremation is considered by the state of Wisconsin to be final disposition, okay. not unlike burial. So by having a person cremated, that act is legally the final disposition of the human body. Now, of course, our bodies 
um, contain uh, mainly water mm -hmm. and carbon, but there are elements that exist in our bodies naturally, uh, minerals and calcium and iron, and, and this is the essence of our skeleton, basically. Sure. And, and after cremation, that's what you have, is the essence of the person. And um, uh, by being able to either have a placement in an urn or a scattering, uh, you can't go to Lambeau Field and right. run around at halftime out in the 50 yard line. That's not what you can do, but, mm -hmm. but um, uh, being discreet about uh, uh, a scattering is, is always appropriate. Okay, question for you. What's a Grecian urn? Well, it's uh, just basically a style of urn. Okay. It, um, that's the most classic shape, you know, it okay. kind of like this. I thought it was based on what he does for a living. <laughs> See, that's a little humor we were talking yes. about in the pre-show. So. <laughs> Dave, I've heard them all. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, you have to pardon cents. me for that. I had threw that one in. Yeah, yes. but um, boom. You caught me on that yes. one. There you go. That's, some, you know, break the mood. That's pre-planning versus some. Um, okay. Absolutely, yes. How does religious beliefs come involved? Because I've seen somewhere, and I'm assuming that's where your travel side of the business comes in. I mean, I've seen some have a full mass at church versus, you know, a few words are said, you know, there's a ceremony like at your facilities. How does that all work and how does religious beliefs come into that? Or how is that addressed? Well, you want me to handle that? Go ahead. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, um, obviously, uh, Spirituality is a big part of our society. Yes. And um, <clears throat> every religion has its uh, traditions. Uh, with Catholics, of course, it's the funeral mass. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, the Jewish uh, people have certain rituals and, and beliefs in, in, in what happens, uh, as well as other faiths. And we usually work closely with the clergy uh, and, and the family uh, and depending on the church that they belong to or the, the faith community that they belong to, we dialogue with the clergy and the clergy works in tandem with us to help them achieve what they would feel would be the most spiritual uh, uh, meaningful uh, type of service okay. available. And um, Pam would also would talk with them about what is important to them. You know, uh, a lot of younger people today prefer not to have such a traditional uh, funeral as uh, uh, the older people may sure. be more familiar with, but they still believe in having some kind of uh, a spiritual event. And in that case, uh, uh, Again, we work with the clergy of preference, and if they do not have that, we do have uh, clergy available to help celebrate that person's life and provide a spiritual message to the, to the family and, and to the friends that uh, come for a service. Okay, I think that's such a wonderful thing, you know, to have that because, you know, some people, you know, they do believe you know, in spirituality or, you know, there is an essence that they believe, but they may not be a full, a church going member or whatever. So it is nice to know that, you know, the choice is there to have, you know, something said, you know, over you or to help celebrate, you know, your life. So I think that's really neat yep. as far as that goes. Um, do you ever have the instances where, you know, somebody passes, well, I'm sure you do, if somebody passes away an accident or whatever where the planning hasn't been done, how does that differ versus, I mean, how do you handle a situation like that? It can be difficult. I, I would imagine, mm -hmm. yes. Um, it creates a challenge uh, for the funeral director. At We consider that to be an at-need mm -hmm. situation where the, the family is requiring us uh, immediately for, for planning a funeral. and. Um, and it, it doesn't just have to be a, a car accident. It can be out shoveling the snow and, sure. and the wife goes to see why a husband has come in and there he is. You know, uh, it can be a sudden death. Um, those are very difficult 
um, and requires special care with the family to help them mm -hmm. through that. Uh, you know, uh, the emotions that you feel um, in a sudden loss such as that can really be numbing to the family to the point where they really need special care and guidance. Um, if we're fortunate enough where the, the husband and, and wife have sat down and talked about what's important to them, even if they only talk to each other about it, it helps tremendously um, in, in, at the time of a, a sudden death. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, a lot of times, unfortunately, that hasn't been done. There's, there's no idea of a final disposition, a cemetery or sure. things of this nature. And it puts a, an extremely uh, high burden of, of uh, decisions mm -hmm. that need to be made in a short period of time right. on the survivors. Right. And you also have to look at the financial side of it. If they haven't planned for anything and they don't have life insurance, mm -hmm. Um, how are they going to pay for it? Right. You know, and they're coming in and they're, they have to make these decisions and now your decisions might not be based on what you truly want or need, mm -hmm. it's based on what you can afford. Yeah, what you can do because, yeah, you're always assuming you can save up for it or if you have life insurance, but if something out of the blue comes in, you know. And, you know, as a funeral director in your backgrounds and your training, do you also address you know like grief counseling is that part of your background or do you then bring in somebody if you see you know a need of like a grief counselor or something like that there's groups that are there? that are available and but we are again a resource for that that we can um, get you in contact with whom you need to be whether it's a child that needs to talk to somebody mm -hmm. sometimes it's a counselor at school um, we can help with all that now we have rainbow kids in Sheboygan um, um, I do know like Sharon Richardson has mm -hmm. a, a support group as well. There are some others in the, in the community. And as Pam indicated, um, we do some follow-up work with our client families. And if they do indeed feel they need a little extra help, we'll certainly guide them into the right place. Okay. I can imagine it's like, you know, anything else, you guys are almost like facilitators to make sure everything is checklist almost that everything is just goes along and smoothly and you help where you can you know mm -hmm. event planner event planner yes. exactly yes so let's talk about we're getting towards the end and we know let's say we're in a nursing home or something where the inevitable is, is, is going to happen let's say how do you work with the nursing home or how does that all work the nursing homes, um, especially in Sheboygan, are very well versed with what goes on as far as when families come in. They are often the ones that tell the families, you need to go to a funeral home and get things planned. Mm -hmm. And um, so they're, they, they work closely with us as far as that goes. Um, and they're also well aware that the money um, that you have mm -hmm. can be depleted quickly. So they want to make sure that the funerals get paid for and we have a product that we use. It's an insurance product, sure. but it protects the money from any Medicaid spend down situations. Okay. And it's something that we can make sure that there is money there to pay for your funeral okay. and protect the family. I know if we could just go through the step of, like in the case of my grandfather, you know, when he did pass away, we got the call, he was at the nursing home, you know, he was passed away. What all happens behind the scenes? Because we were there, we said our goodbyes at the time and then it was like we left and then things magically happened behind the scenes. What all happens? Well whether it's two in the afternoon or two in the morning when a person passes away when the family is comfortable the uh, staff at the health care uh, center whether it's a hospital or a nursing home uh, will contact the the funeral home and let us know that somebody's passed away and then we come up to the place of death and we meet, sometimes the family is there where we can meet with them and talk to them for a little while, possibly uh, uh, maybe already set up an appointment to meet for to making arrangements. And then we bring their loved one into our care and back to the funeral home. And um, a lot of things have to happen in mm -hmm. a very short period of time. Uh, of course, with the uh, newspaper, uh, the deadlines for newspapers can be real tricky 
um, and uh, coordinating with clergy and uh, cemeteries. And as Pam indicated, there's, there's a lot of details that need to be done in a short period of time. Um, if they have indeed planned out ahead of time, it makes our job much easier because mm -hmm. we already know what their decisions are and based on that, we can certainly start getting all of the necessary details in line for them before we even meet. So there's times where we're able to finish up the rough draft of an obituary mm -hmm. before the family arrives and um, maybe they've already made their selections of a, of a casket and which cemetery or, or an urn and uh, what their plans are for services and we can get all of those necessary things coordinated. But there, there are a lot of things, Dave, that have to be done. Yeah. And it, it's interesting that you say that it almost seemed like, you know, magic the way everything fell into place. Um, to a certain degree, I'd like to think that was from experience. Um, but uh, also, uh, uh, funeral directors know what needs to be done. And certainly, we don't have enough time today to go into details mm -hmm. with that. But uh, uh, all of those decisions have to be made sure. and certainly ahead of time is always best. Sure, definitely. We have about a minute left. Any final thoughts before we close? Um, I just, I'm a passionate person when it comes to pre-planning. I've done it myself and I can't imagine why people wouldn't do it. It's scary to think about your own death, but imagine the people that have just, you know, right. experienced a death and now they have to plan it for you. Um, there's multiple steps to it. You don't have to pay for it right away. There's, it's just mm -hmm. getting started and finding out what it's all about is important. Okay. I would have to echo that. And of course, the other thing is I would encourage uh, spouses to start the dialogue between themselves mm -hmm. and, uh, and let their, their children know what their sure. thoughts are too. That's all so important. Okay. Well, that's our show for this episode of Quality of Life. I'd like to thank Mark and Pam for joining us to talk about you know, planning for the end. I think it was a great episode and learned quite a bit. So again, I thank you both for coming on the show. You're welcome. Thanks for thank having you. us. Um, for WSCS TV, uh, I'm Dave Augustine. If you have any other questions about this episode or any other questions, you can contact us on our website at www.wscssheboygan.com. Again, thanks for watching.